the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on comparing two lists in Excel using VLOOKUP. Now comparing lists or columns of data is a really useful skill to learn. Quite often you might be faced with a situation where you have two lists that are slightly different and you need to be able to run a check to see where the matches or the differences are. And there are many different ways that you can do this. This is just my preferred method because I love using VLOOKUP wherever possible. So what I'm going to show you in this lesson is a couple of examples of how you can use VLOOKUP to compare two lists of data to highlight differences. And I'm also going to throw in a couple of other functions and utilities that can make your results look a lot more meaningful. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. So in this first example, I have a worksheet called Employees 1. This has a list of employee IDs, the employee name, the department for that employee, and then the date they were hired. I also have a second worksheet called Employees 2, which has very similar information in it. So it might be that I work in HR and the Employees 1 worksheet is the log of employees that I keep. And Employees 2 might be a log of the same thing that maybe one of my colleagues keeps. And she sent me this Employees 2 list, but I've noticed that there are some discrepancies. The first thing I've noticed is that her list is slightly shorter than mine. So hers goes down to row 46, whereas mine goes down to row 51. So I can see that there are some discrepancies here. So my task is to compare these two lists and find out which records are missing from my colleague's employee list. And we're going to use VLOOKUP and a couple of other functions to do this. And we're going to build it up step by step so that it's easy for you to understand. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is something that is optional, but is something that I find really helps me out when I'm doing this type of thing. And that is I'm going to start out by naming the range of data. So I'm going to jump across to employees two, which is the list that my colleague has sent me. I'm going to click in my data and press the control A key to select all. Using the name box just above, I'm going to click in there and I'm going to give this cell range a meaningful name. So I'm going to call this employees2 and hit enter to set that name. Now that I've done that, I can use that range name in my formula as opposed to having to come in and select the cell references. So let's jump back to employees1. So now I'm going to construct my VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to do it in cell F2 and type in equals VLOOKUP. Now the VLOOKUP formula has four different arguments with the last one being optional. The first argument, which is highlighted in bold, is the lookup value. Now a couple of points to note here about using VLOOKUP. The lookup value is the piece of information that you want to use to look up data in the other table. So the table on the employees to worksheet. And the lookup value that you choose should always be a value that is present in both tables of data. So for example, the employee ID, I know that I have that in my list and my colleague also has that in her list. So that would be a good choice for a lookup value. The lookup value should be unique. So you don't want anything that has any duplicates. And you should also have your lookup value in the leftmost column of your data. So with all of that in mind, I'm going to use the employee ID as my lookup value. So my first argument is going to be cell A2, comma. I now need to tell Excel where I'm looking up the employee ID, which table. Well, I want to look it up in the table of data on the employees to worksheet. Now, because I named that range of cells, I don't have to click across to the employees to worksheet and select the cell range, I can simply press the F3 key, which is going to pull up any named ranges that I have in my workbook. I can select employees two and click on OK. Comma, column index number. Now, ordinarily, when you're performing a VLOOKUP, the column index number is the number of the column that you want to return. So essentially, what result are you looking for? Now, in this case, I really just want Excel to tell me if a record is missing or if it isn't. So I don't specifically want to pull back a particular column index number. 
It's also worth noting that Excel numbers columns from left to right, starting at 1. So the employee ID would be column 1, the employee column 2, department column 3, so on and so forth. Now in this scenario, I'm not particularly interested in any specific column, so I can select any of them. So let's just go with column number 1, comma. My final argument is a true or false argument. Am I doing an approximate match or an exact match? Now this refers to your lookup value. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking up the employee ID in the employees to table and I want Excel to do an exact match. I want it to exactly match that employee ID. So in this case, I'm going to add a false on the end. Remember, with any true or false arguments in Excel, you can replace them with a 1 or a 0, respectively. Close my bracket, hit enter, and let's see what we get. So let's copy this formula down using the fill handle. I'm just going to drag all the way down and let go. And what you'll see is that because we chose to return column number one, it's going to give me the employee number. But everywhere that it doesn't find a match, I have an NA error. So essentially, anything with a number next to it is present in the employees to table. Anything with an NA is not. So these essentially are the records that are missing from my colleague's data set. Now this result is absolutely fine. I can pretty much see what I need to see. I can see which records are missing, but it's not particularly neat. So let's take a look at a few techniques we can use to tidy this up and make the results a little bit more meaningful. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to cell F2 and up in the formula bar, I'm going to click in front of that VLOOKUP formula. And I'm going to add some error handling in here. Now, because I have an NA error, I'm going to use the function is NA and open bracket. Now, because I've opened a bracket, I need to close one off on the end. My only argument is the formula that I currently have in there. And if I hit enter and then copy this formula down, this is going to convert my results into true or false. So wherever I have a true result, that represents missing records. That is where those NA errors were. So now this does look a little bit neater. I don't have random employee IDs and NA errors all over my spreadsheet, but it is still quite hard to pick out those true results in column F. So how can I make this even more meaningful and even easier for anyone looking at this data to instantly see which records are missing? Well, I'm going to go up to the formula bar and I'm going to edit my formula again. And this time I'm going to add an if function onto the front. Now what an if function does, if you're not familiar with it, is it performs a logical test and then produces one result if the value is true and one result if the value is false. And this is going to allow me to assign text to those true and false results, therefore making it a lot more meaningful. Now the first argument we have here is the logical test. And basically, the formula that I already have in here is my logical test. So I'm going to click at the end, press comma. I now need to define what I want it to output if the value is true. So wherever I have a true result, I want it to say missing record. And remember, when you're dealing with text, you need to put it in quote marks. What do I want Excel to output if it finds a false result? Well, in this case, I'm not too concerned about having anything in there. I could put text like OK or maybe record present. In this case, I just want to have a blank cell. So I'm going to add in two quote marks. Close the bracket, hit enter. And now if I copy this down, my results are a lot tidier and those missing records now really stand out from the list. So simply by using a few different formulas, I've managed to extract a really meaningful result. My VLOOKUP is pulling back the information that I want. I'm using ISNA to change my results to true or false. And then I'm changing the true or false result to something more meaningful using the IF function. That is quite a lot to take in. So let's practice this and just do it one more time. In this example, I have something reasonably similar, but this time we're dealing with invoice numbers. So on this first worksheet, Invoice Report, this is an invoice report for the client Microworld. 
So maybe I'm an accountant and I keep an invoice log for all of the invoices for this particular client. And then maybe at the end of the year, the client sends me their log of their invoices. And what I want to do as the accountant is compare the report I've been sent by the client with the report that I have on file to see if there's any discrepancies. So let's use exactly the same method. I'm going to jump to my customer report and I'm going to name the range. I'm going to call this customer underscore report. And remember, when you're naming ranges, you can't have any spaces, so separate different words with an underscore or make them all one word. Now I'm going to construct my VLOOKUP, open bracket. My lookup value is going to be the invoice number because that is common between the two tables. The table array, well, I'm going to press the F3 key and select customer report. Which column do I want to pull back? Well, it doesn't really matter, so let's just use column one. And then I want to exactly match that invoice number, so I'm going to have a false argument on the end. Hit enter, and then I can use my fill handle to copy those results down. Once again, I'm seeing NA wherever it finds a discrepancy. So let's jump up to our formula bar and use our isNA function to handle those errors and turn them into true or false results. And finally, I'm then going to add in my if function to make these results more meaningful. My logical test is my formula, so all I need to do is add on to the end what I want it to say if the value is true. So if it's true, I want it to say missing, and this time if it's false, I want it to say OK. Close my bracket and hit Enter. Copy down. And instantly I can see which invoices are missing in the spreadsheet that the client has sent me. So finally, I just want to show you a little trick how you can use conditional formatting to highlight or provide a background fill for any of these missing records. And this again is reasonably straightforward to do. Now the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to click in cell E4 so I can see my formula and I'm going to copy part of this formula. So I'm going to select from the front of isNA and I'm going to select all of the VLOOKUP formula. This is the only part I need to use. Control C to copy to the clipboard and then press escape to come out of edit mode. What I'm going to do now is basically select all of the data excluding the headings in my table. And with that selection made, I'm going to go to the Home tab conditional formatting, and I'm going to create a new rule. And what I'm going to say here underneath select a rule type is I want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And in the box underneath, I'm going to press Control V to paste in that formula that I copied to the clipboard. Now, one thing I need to add onto the front here is an equal sign, so Excel knows that that is actually a formula. So now I have my formula in here, I need to tell Excel how I want to format those cells. So wherever we have a missing record, I want the background fill to be a different color, and I also want to highlight the values in bold. So let's click on Format. I'm going to jump across to the Fill tab and select a fill color. So let's do this lighter green. I'm also going to make the font bold. Click on OK. Now, if I just click OK here, it's not going to look correct. So let's do that. And you can see that I haven't really got the result that I'm looking for. Now, why is that? Well, if we go back up to conditional formatting and manage rules, and let's edit this rule and take another look at it. Now, the problem here is with this cell reference A4. What I need to do is I need to make the column absolute by adding a dollar symbol in front of the column only because essentially I want this formatting to run across the width of the row but not the column. And now if I click on OK and OK again, you can see I get the result I was looking for. And of course, if I now wanted to, I no longer really need column E, so I can just delete out that column and I have a nice neat list with just the records that are missing highlighted. I can then use this to follow up with the client and work out where the discrepancy has occurred.
So those are a few different techniques that you can use to compare two lists or two columns of data in Excel using formulas and conditional formatting. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.